Mr. Thompson calls the waiter, order steak and baked potato. He leaves the bone and gristle, and he never eats the skin. The bus boy comes and takes it, with a cough contaminates it, puts it in a can with coffee grounds and sardine tins. And the truck comes by on Friday and carts it all away. A thousand trucks just like it are converging on the bay. Oh, garbage, 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 garbage. We're filling up the seas with garbage. What will we do when there's no place left to put all the garbage, garbage, garbage? Welcome to NEKVT Rocks. My guests today are Doug Swanson and Henry Coe. They're here partly representing Doug, uh, Dun, duh, representing Dump, but also representing themselves. Tell us what Dump is. Well, Dump is uh, an organization that we really just formed about three, three and a half weeks ago. And that was over coffee uh, among about eight of us in Barton, Vermont. And uh, a number of us had expressed to each other concerns about uh, this, this application to expand the Coventry landfill mm -hmm. uh, by 52 acres and uh, also to extend the permit to receive waste uh, yeah. for a long time. We thought 22 years, now we're learning, we hope, just 10 years through the Still permit. Still a long time. It is. Uh, I think what people have to, should know is that uh, Vermont only has one permitted landfill in the state and right. that's now Coventry in Orleans County and we're the one of the least populated counties mm -hmm. and uh, supposedly uh, the, the least uh, economically viable uh, that is we're the, the income level average is less a lot mm -hmm. less than the state so this all started from a coffee break in Barton it three did. weeks ago that's amazing well uh, one of the fellows uh, who came is a legislator and by the way this is nonpartisan so I won't mention his name okay. nor party and, and he's clever and he came up with this acronym, uh, D-U-M-P, Don't Undermine Memphis Magog's Integrity. Uh, I'm sorry, Purity, mm -hmm. D-U-M-P. Yeah. And uh, we know we have a lot of interested Canadian friends. Right. For those who uh, aren't familiar with where the landfill is, we're situated just south of the border uh, here uh, about a fifth of the lake, I believe, is in Vermont. Right. Four fifths is in Canada. Right, and it's there their drinking water. 200,000 Canadians use this lake for their drinking water. Right. And we have our little Vermont outhouse, not so little. It's a mega dump, the only mm -hmm. dump in the state. Right. And, and it's located, surrounded by precious wetlands, right. uh, the Black River and South Bay. And is this what brought you into it, Doug? Because yeah. you're a fisherman. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Uh, that said, though, I mean, we, uh, I mean, even as a young, you know, young person, I was uh, always made aware of not to eat too many fish out of the South Bay, and that went back to when the dump was located where the fishing access is now, that right. was run by the Newport City. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess that uh, to step one further, I mean, I'm more, my concern is more of uh, why are we centralizing our landfills? Right. You know, uh, why are we importing, why are we importing our garbage? It's mm -hmm. uh, a very good question. And why are we the ones that have to suffer the burden? You know, most people, you know, draw their garbage to the end of their driveway and then their problem is over. Mm -hmm. We're the resolution for that, their problem. And we and didn't vote to become the solution for Pennsylvania and New York and some of the other states whose trucks I see here. Uh, Henry and I were on the phone last night and, mm -hmm. you know, talking about this. And, and, and we both agreed, I hope you don't mind if I go there, but <laughs> that, that uh, you know, one thing that we're really fortunate that we became aware of is that, you know, that we're, lo we're lucky that Casella is the one that's operating it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're professional people. Right. And, uh, and, you know, they should be, uh, you know, respected for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll second that. Uh, we were uh, cordially given a tour of the facility mm -hmm. by the manager. <clears throat> we took the whole day. Sure. <clears throat> and uh, 
I don't know how to run a dump, but it looks like these are professionals and they do. Mm -hmm. They do a good job within the laws given. Right. That's, that's I think, the problem as Vermont people that we need to focus on. These laws were written in the 1990s. They've not really been updated. Mm -hmm. And uh, whereas the, the chemicals in our waste are getting m much stronger. Right. Uh, and we've already seen some of the results of that down in Bennington. That's exactly right, uh, Pam. Uh, they've had to close 300 residential wells down there for Which is uh, a, a chemical. Really scary. <laughs> a chemical known as PFAS, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a family of compounds that uh, came from Teflon materials, remember those? Oh, I do. And, uh, and also Scotchgard, anything water repellent right. uh, agents, and they persist for, we don't know how long they persist. Mm -hmm. they're, they're having trouble with PFAS now in a landfill that closed in, uh, I believe, 18, 1982 down in the Portsmouth Wow. Uh, New Hampshire region mm -hmm. and the concentrations in the brook below that closed landfill are increasing. So what we do today is going to affect our grandchildren. Mm -hmm. That's my concern. It is. I'm, a, I'm an old man. I, I truly am, but <laughs> I've got roots here, 50 years mm -hmm. of roots in uh, Orleans County and now more recently in Caledonia County. All my children and grand, my, my, I'm sorry, my three sons are born in this area and uh, and all my grandchildren. And I, I'm, I'm willing to speak out now, finally. I've mm -hmm. been too complacent for years. Well, now we're getting the wake-up calls, certainly from Bennington and from other areas in the country. One of the things that's fascinating to me about this, and it's becoming a movement, I mean, in three weeks where you look where you were and where you are now is pretty amazing, is the mix of people involved. I mean, one of the really good things about our area is we don't tend to stick to party lines. And this group really exemplifies that. It's a mix of real conservatives, old-style farmers, progressives, who are all coming together and focusing on one important issue, which is about our safety and the purity of yeah. our water. And a concern for our Canadian neighbors. Right. Well, that's the irony. We live on this border. We have lovely, we've historically lovely relations. Mm -hmm. uh, we do. And uh, I know a lot of Canadians who, who have become friends over the years. Um, we just have to be, their, their, their health, their future health is as important as those in Vermont. But yet the application and the rules are blind and never say anything right. about the Canadians. We act as if there's that wall between us. You know, the one we talk about on the southern border, it apparently exists <laughs> here legally. But yeah. obviously we know that's crazy. That's crazy talk. Mm -hmm. I go back to my, my, my previous statement is, uh, you know, is the whole philosophy of putting one big disaster in one location. Right. right. You know, um, my father, when I was... A young man, my father ran the landfill in, in the town of Barton, mm -hmm. for the town of Barton. People had a chance to, uh, <clears throat> when they saw, you know, inappropriate work, they had a chance to go to the slut men and, and uh, you know, people were kind of monitoring their own dump. Mm -hmm. Smart thinking. And uh, that's not something, you know, no. if you... Uh, you know, if you go to the dump now, you're left down at the lower one. I mean, probably for safety reasons more than, mm -hmm. you know, worrying about, you know, what, what, could, what could be seen at the top. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, I, again, I go back to the whole philosophy of how we hold our, you know, how we handle our waste. And, uh, and how much waste we have. You know, I mean, I... I I have no documentation on it, but I know that I, I heard through the grapevine that material uh, from the Big Dig was transported from the Big Dig in Boston yep. up to this landfill. And, you know, if it's not good enough for Boston, why should it be good enough for me? Yeah. Very good question. You know, um, you know, that's, you know, that's where I'm hanging my hat. I. You talk about state agencies who are monitoring this and who have responsibility for our watershed and the other waterways. Do you feel that they're doing a competent job? 
competent, uh, uh, yes, I'll say competent, but not enough. Uh, I just recently learned that one jurisdiction in the Agency of Natural Resources mm -hmm. in Montpelier that is responsible for this application, the Solid Waste Division, mm -hmm. Uh, and they will be the ones approving the application, yet they say another division is responsible for the wa water intake that, that we drink. And, <laughs> and, uh, and this, conquer. <laughs> well, I, no, I don't think it's that conspiratorial. Yeah. I think that uh, the legislation given set it up that way. We've got to think outside the box and integrate our thinking. It isn't what happened. We should think in terms of, you know, waste. Waste is a behavior. Mm -hmm. We all have the opportunity to educate ourselves, hopefully, and reduce it. Reduce, refuse, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, re recycle. Right. Um, some of these box stores, I think, are really staging areas with all their plastic mm -hmm. one-way one, one packaging. Uh, they're staging areas for landfills. The landfills love it because they make money on volume and tonnage. And, and, and they're, they're corporate, they're private entities. Many, many jurisdictions all over the United States, they're public entities, publicly run mm -hmm. in the public interest. Um, here in Vermont, we now have one permitted landfill and it can make the choice when it makes a contract outside of the state mm -hmm. like, like this uh, waste. I don't know if it's big dig fill or not, but a lot of trucks are coming north now a long period of time. That's right. how I first learned about it. About a year and two months ago at the rest area going south. That was kind of interesting. The nice late, uh, nice woman at the uh, rest area said, I made a new friend. Uh, I said, oh, that's nice. We were having a coffee and she said, yeah, and he's going to be having coffee with me uh, for the next year and a half maybe. Uh, I, I said, what? He, he drives an empty truck south. I said, well, that must mean he's taking an empty truck north, I mean, a loaded truck north. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, he told me he's bringing um, contaminated waste from the Boston area to the Coventry landfill. Lucky us. That's how I first learned, and that's when I got started. Then mm -hmm. I, I fell asleep for about a year until mm -hmm. the day before the public hearing in Coventry, June 21st. Right. And you two are doing a wonderful job waking up other people, as I understand it. I mean, you've gone from unknown three weeks ago to there's a big buzz. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> there is. <laughs> we're if not public relations. Be given, it goes to Henry. We're not public relations people. We're just uh, we've been interviewed and uh, uh, like yourself and uh, trying to just say honestly where, where our feelings have come from. You're local people who are talking to friends and neighbors, and that's what education is. I mean, that's how anything changes, by raising awareness one person at a time. I mean, I'm sure we're all, we all are familiar with Coventry paying very little in taxes because the Coventry dump pays Coventry a lot of money. So they're very invested in not seeing what's happening so the more that other communities say, wait a minute, those trucks are coming from Pennsylvania, those trucks are coming from New York, those trucks are coming from Massachusetts. Yeah. Do we really want to take everybody else's garbage and toxic waste? Yeah. Well, we, we, we shouldn't sell our future legacy, should we? No. Uh, I'd like to just state that there are a lot of questions about the so-called permanence of these lined landfills. Mm -hmm. Technology is not forever, uh, right. n neither is uh, our construction techniques. To me, these baggy liners underneath tons and tons of, it's a now a mountain of waste, mm -hmm. uh, are able to be punctured and they could leak. Once they leak, uh, the leachate comes through, not collected in those mm -hmm. underground pipes. And, and this leachate, another, uh, in records within the Agency of Natural Resources, has, has been found to find this PFAS material in Coventry leachate. Mm -hmm. It's not yet to a dangerous standard, but who's to say it, it might not concentrate more. Right. Uh, we, we have to be very careful for the future of, of, the, of our public health, the mm -hmm. Canadians' public health, but really our, our beautiful environment here. Right. I mean, if Newport residents aren't awake because of 
the, the risk to the lake, it would be helpful to know that the leachate that is coming to Newport, where some of it is allegedly being decontaminated here, that also brings some money to Newport, so there's a vested interest in knowing about this. But do we know that it's really safe by the time it's released? And who determines that? And how? For Any, do, you have, do you have the answers? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have the answers. From what I have read, Right. and have been told by others more intelligent mm -hmm. than I, it's a changing science. Right. These wastewater treatment plants, such as Newport, and there's four others to, mm -hmm. to which uh, Coventry leachate is being trucked, uh, were designed to treat household sewage, household and domestic waste, mm -hmm. not chemical uh, chemicals. Mm -hmm. They cannot take out these, these chemicals that are really the dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. They filter through or are captured again in the um, uh, the sludge. The sludge then goes back to to the, the landfill and then eventually comes out, I would think, in a more concentrated form. Mm -hmm. But that's the real concern of the Canadians who have to drink this water. Right. Uh, so, no, I'm, I'm, I'm no expert, but I am concerned. Uh, I don't give full credence to plastic liners right. forever. Well, plastic liners are their own chemical compounds that well, that's, a, that's an interesting irony. Yeah. Uh, on New Hampshire Public Radio, and I was told this, uh, television, on, I was told this by a friend, that closed landfill that I referred to earlier in mm -hmm. Portsmouth, and, it, and this brook is now high in PFAS, mm -hmm. this, this persistent right. chemical, and there, some people are directing it back to the actual liner cap materials. Mm -hmm. uh, and who's to say if we should take samples of these liners in Coventry? Probably. I don't want to, I don't <laughs> want to raise any, I'm, I'm not an alarmist. Mm -hmm. We've come here to, to uh, learn ourselves and to try to mm. uh, right. w raise awareness. And to, uh, to be alarmist would be the wrong way to go. We Absolutely. hope that we can all come together. The state, Casella, is doing a good job with what, what the science that they know and mm -hmm. ourselves. But going back to Doug, Doug, I'd like you to talk more about, should we not take care of our own waste in our own backyard? Uh, Burlington's waste, Rutland's waste, presumably. Um, it's all coming here into Coventry. Bo some of Boston's contaminated waste, that's not domestic trash like we're throwing in. And none of it is tested. Right. We don't know what's in these pits. So you're suggesting that, say, Burlington and other communities come up with their own dumps, their own way of handling, rather than just shipping it to us, where they can say, oh, that's done, done and dusted. That's a really smart idea. If, if what we want to do is waste less. It's, it's backbutting the responsibility onto the residents that are creating it. Mm -hmm. It's just that philosophy. I mean, I travel Route 5 regularly. I mean, the number plates that I see on the trailers, whether mm -hmm. that's the original, you know, whether that's the original pickup of that load, but, mm -hmm. you know, as far away as New Jersey. Right. You know, um, they're... <laughs> out of sight, out of mind, right, Doug? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we all want that in our lives, is to be rid of, rid of our headaches. We do. <laughs> you know, like we also want convenience, no matter how harmful that convenience is to the environment. Uh, so many of the products that we use are, non, are not easily broken down into components that can be reutilized. So instead of having, say, cloth diapers for babies, we use diapers that are full of toxic material, which is fascinating when you think we're putting that on our kids. <laughs> but there's a plastic backing to all of that. It doesn't break down. Right. And yet we continue to use it. We gift wrap fruit in the supermarkets in plastic. Well, fruit comes with its own environmental wrapper that we could compost, like a banana. But we put bunches of bananas on supermarket shelves with plastic wrap around them. We've sort of lost our minds with some of Absolutely. this. Absolutely. I served in a styrofoam platter, right? Yeah. A single or two bananas. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I how lived dumb is that? I lived across the road from a World War II vet. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was back in the village of Orleans when the village of Orleans would pick up their, gar you know, 
pick up their garbage. Mm -hmm. And this guy would bring down a bag once a month, one bag, one grocery paper bag mm -hmm. of garbage to be sent to the dump, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think of that. I mean, I'm as guilty as anybody else. You know, I bring up, you know, two barrels to the dump, you mm -hmm. know, every week. And it's right. like, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's kind of forced on you. Even if you don't want it, it shows up. Right. You I, know? I agree. Uh, we're all part of the problem. I can remember 50 years ago, 45 years ago, when old Charlie Nato operated his dump here, mm -hmm. which is the precursor to the big mega dump we have now, right. but it's the same location. <laughs> I said to myself as I was poisoning the Black River with my kerosene or my paint cans, I, I was part of the problem, I remember. Mm -hmm. But my gut told me instinctively that's the wrong thing to do. I got that, I, 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 that memory was brought home to me again when, mm -hmm. when uh, I, I saw the size, I took the tour. It, it's, it, the, the, the location hasn't changed. It's surrounded by pristine wetlands. Mm -hmm. Beautiful wetlands. These should wetlands. be treasured. It, it, and I had the opportunity, luckily, to, to take a spin by air. I, yeah. I didn't pay for it. I was invited to do so. <laughs> and this is a gorgeous, beautiful topography. Mm -hmm. It all slopes down gently, forested and farms. There's some beautiful mm -hmm. farms in this Coventry area. And uh, there's an 80-acre scar. Mm -hmm. It's like a, the, 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 a bull had gored the earth. Mm -hmm. It, from the air, it was an education. We should treasure what we have here. Now, we should take our fair share, and let's be realistic, that dump's gonna be there. It's, like, it's got four more years capacity. Right. Uh, we should treasure that capacity. Hats off to Casella. However, they, a, den, a, a, a landfill makes money, if it's private, by filling fast. Right. And so, as we as, in this state try to reduce our recyclables and put less of that and less uh, organics uh, composted mm -hmm. compostable material in if we do that less and it is getting less from vermont they're using that space and it's now more trucks are coming from out of state it makes no sense you're right you're absolutely right there's a lot of education that's going to have to happen here well <laughs> Hopefully we can work together to do, to yeah. do that and, and, and come together to reach some kind of agreement. Right, and then involve the schools and little children who are usually the best ones at educating their parents because we've been so acculturated into convenience, yep. making it easy and, oh, let somebody else deal with that. But as you push the stewardship aspect of, of what we're doing, for the next generation and the generations beyond that. I mean, what planet are we leaving? <laughs> As we all check out. <laughs> you know, I, I was startled the other day. I have a, 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 a grandson. I have seven grandchildren in mm -hmm. this area. Um, and I was always proud that my twin boys were bo the first twins born in the new North Country Hospital uh, in 1975. Mm -hmm. uh, a son of one of those twins told me the other day his memory as a third grader it's on a school trip of the landfill mm -hmm. was these dinosaur looking machines light looking machines with treads this wide and and uh, jaws. grippers and jaws <laughs> and everything and he said oh that's awesome that's the memory he had right. and maybe that is now I don't know who sponsored that tour it was great that he saw that. Mm -hmm. I just saw that last week. I never had seen that before. But now that same son in eighth grade, uh, grandson, is learning the broader. Uh, and, and he's picking up trash. He, he's out on green up day. Mm -hmm. He's concerned. Um, from third grade to eighth grade, he's undergone a great change. That's great. And it's not just green up day. It's every day. That's right. I mean, why are we throwing cigarette butts down on the ground, yeah. knowing what they do to water and to wildlife? Yeah. And the, the fish that you're catching and other people are catching, how poisoned are they? How poisoned are we already? We know when breast milk is tested that there's all kinds of chemicals that show up. 
I can't. Uh, I don't know that answer. Obviously, right. if you're asking me that question, um, and I'm curious if there's even been a study done on those, on those two riverways on on the fish that are there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can. I wear another hat with an uh, with the Orleans County Rod and Gun Club, and we've mm -hmm. been trying to advocate, you know, uh, for 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 fish in those rivers. It's been a tremendous decline in those rivers over the last years, 20, 30 years back. Wow. And that isn't just for me. That's from, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, other than other than local fishermen fishing that mm -hmm. that have watched it. You know, we. Uh, uh, on our own, the Orleans Rod and Gun Club, uh, we have the f we are fortunate enough to have people that uh, in Burlington that actually raise our fish for us. I mean, we are supported by Fish and Wildlife in mm -hmm. doing that, but you know, if we weren't taking the action, we wouldn't be having anything in those rivers. Wow! And the fish that we have, it sounds as though we're importing as opposed to growing our own. Well. I mean, the idea of a healthy river is that it sustains itself. Exactly. And uh, that's not the case. Now, what's th what's the cause for that decline in fish? We not we're not sure. We've been beating our head against the wall mm -hmm. for quite some time. But what if? And we should be looking at that. Yeah. And so many other aspects. You know. <laughs> Tied into just what Doug said, uh, we were hosted by the landfill operator mm -hmm. to take a paddle. Uh, and I had, I had made that paddle 40 years ago, and then I was asked uh, by a state regulator overseeing this landfill's future, uh, well, what did you think, Henry? Uh, and I said, my dim memory, it looks pretty much the same. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. I came home, and, uh, and it does. But what do we not see? My, I came right. home, and my son said, Dad, I read that if you take a a cruise across the Pacific, it looks beautiful, but people don't realize there's plastic floating below the surface mm -hmm. in the Pacific the size of the state of Texas. It's true. And uh, so beauty can be just skin deep. And right. I think this is what Doug is saying when he said uh, it doesn't look it's like these rivers are sustainable. That is, the, if the fish are not reproducing. Right. What else is going on? So. We are almost out of time. I told you it was really fast. How do people locally who are interested in learning more about this get in contact with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're having a public meeting uh, here in Newport uh, on, at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. on Monday, the second Monday of September, That's September Monday 10. The 10th. And it's open to everyone. We hope to have a balanced panel and moderator and uh, no politics, please. <laughs> this right. is, as we said at the outset, we all need to be interested and concerned about the right. environment we share. And so this is what this is about. A lot of people don't know. Um, so please come September 10, uh, and if you want to go from there, there'll be a sign-up sheet. Uh, if it's a legislative uh, change that we need in the coming years, mm -hmm. that would be the chance to uh, form and energize. Is there an email address that we could post after this show? on the NEK site? Yeah, uh, and I don't know if this is, uh, but someone came up with nolakedump at gmail.com. That's small, nice and clear. <laughs> nolakedump at gmail.com, and, and if you want to have a, an update as we do things, as we try to move ahead, you should get an update. It Thank you. It is a really important issue, and I hope that the forum that you have on the 10th is absolutely packed with a lot of media coverage so that people can get information and then make their own decisions and we can all because this isn't just our problem here it's everybody's problem well, but we're a focus because we're it we just went through kind of a debacle here with the JP stuff yes we did and and you know I think that we need to learn not to just set aside and w expect other people to make our decisions for right. us. You know, I think we all were around here scratching our heads about what we were being told. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, are we doing the same thing again? You know, with permitting the... That's a very good point. You know, again, and I want to, 
there's no villain here. If you want, we are, Henry and I are the most low-key advocates you could <laughs> expect, you know. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we come to a conclusion that there's, you know, it's just, it's just the juggernaut that's taken place here. Hey, let's mm -hmm. look at this again, and maybe there's a better answer to what's going on. Right. You know. And it's one that we can all be involved in. Just as we're all involved in creating this, we can all be involved in the solution. In being the solution. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you both for coming, taking a chunk out of your day and risking being on TV. <laughs> it wasn't so bad, was it? Well, there might be fallout later. We'll have to see. Yeah. Our debut. Thank you for coming. And the program on the 10th will also be televised, so there's going to be more information available. Very good. Thank you for having us. Yeah, You're thank very you. welcome. Garbage, 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 garbage. Their stocks and their bonds, all garbage. What will they do when their system goes to smash? There's no value to their cash. There's no money to be made, but there's a world to be repaid. Their kids will read in history books about financiers and other crooks, and feudalism and slavery, and nukes and all their knavery. Their history's dustbin they're consigned, along with many other kinds of garbage.